Hey! So I can already hear, I can hear the screams of Bethany, why were you gone so long? Okay, I, I don't really have a reason um, other than, anyway, we don't have time to unpack all that. Um, but today I wanted to do a, another installment of what I like to call Coffee Date. It's a series of where we just sit down, just talk to each other, just have a conversation, you and I. The last video that we did actually did have a subject, like a one definition subject, and I pulled a few people and we talked and it was great. Um, but this one is a little bit more on the train that'll take us wherever it takes us as we go along in this journey, you and I, um, which is how most of my in real life conversations go. I wanted to majorly focus this video on something that God has really been placing on my heart recently, but is also extremely hard for me, is talking about diabetes and how difficult a life with diabetes can be. And some truths that a lot of diabetics in the diabetic community um, are really not wanting to say because it looks kind of scary or sad or it doesn't have a hopeful message which I really struggled with this because when you when you know God is kind of like telling you to to do something and you're like no no no, no that, that's too scary I can't do that like don't ask me to do that please and then you realize like hey even even though it's scary and it's hard someone's gonna someone's gonna look at it and it's gonna help them right and that's a thousand percent what i want to do with this channel with my career with my life if my experiences help one person then that's all i need it to do that's like my life goal fulfilled and so i'm gonna talk about the hard scary truths the kind of unspoken unknown um, not really acknowledged truths about diabetes so let's get on into our coffee date so when you see diabetics and kind of like look at the diabetic community, especially from an outsider's perspective, you can kind of see that like it's a it's filled with a lot of people being like, you know, like diabetes doesn't define me. Um, I'm a perfectly capable human, even with diabetes. Diabetes doesn't control me. Um, I'm still happy. Like, like, look at my life. Look at my A1C, my numbers. It's perfect. Like, everything's great. Um, and I think that's sort of... I think that's sort of common in society, just as a norm, not even in the diabetic community, just as a society, we kind of, we don't like sharing the bad parts, we don't like letting people see the unfiltered, raw, real side of our lives, because um, especially with like Instagram and social media and stuff, you, you want to show the best of you, you want to, you want, um, the best part of you to show. You don't want to show people the bad stuff. You don't want them to see um, the bad things. And that happens a lot, especially in the community full of diabetics. You don't want to show your struggles. You don't want to show people that it sucks. You don't want to show people that it hurts. You want to um, give them a positive message like you know diabetes doesn't control you like you can still live a perfectly normal life even with diabetes um, and that's great it's great to give people a sense of hope and I am not saying do not do that but the problem here is saying you can live a perfectly normal life with diabetes with no but on the end of it does that make sense and the problem with social media is it is a double-edged sword because it can on one hand do really good things and on the other hand do really bad things. Comparison will ruin, destroy, kill your soul. It will hurt you in ways that you don't even know. It will prohibit you from learning and improving and helping yourself um it's it's just bad it's the worst um and i used to do it but comparing yourself to someone else will never help because you are you you are not them you are not you don't know their life you don't know 
um, what they went through, what they've been through, um, you know, how their body works. Their body works differently than your body. No two bodies are the same. They're kind of like snowflakes. They, you will not have two bodies working the exact same way. Whatever you compare yourself to, just please don't do that because that will only hurt you. That will only hurt your soul because you are not them. They're not you. When I was younger and I would watch, like my mom would say like, hey, I found this really cool diabetic YouTuber. Like, you know, you should watch some of their videos. And I'd watch them and you know, their blood sugar would never go above 110. And I was like, I can't relate to that. Like here I am with a 200 blood sugar because I can't get it down at that point in time. Like I can't relate to that. Um, this person ate 60 carbs and they're only bullishing 5.5 units. Like, I can't relate to that. And I would think, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not like that? Like, you know, they must have it right. They must have the secret and formula to life and diabetes. And like, they're just like the poster child for diabetes. And how do I get like that? How do I become them? And that was so wrong because I have a different body than them. My body works differently than they do. Doesn't mean I failed. Doesn't mean that I wasn't doing what I was supposed to. It doesn't mean that, that I was a horrible failure of a human being because I couldn't get my blood sugars like that. It just meant that my body worked differently in that time and there were different things that I had to do in order to get to that good place than they had to do to get to that good place. You feel me? Um, a lot of people really like to put Nick Jonas into the kind of diabetic poster child sort of thing. Um, and they say, you know, look at Nick Jonas, like he gets to tour the world, he has diabetes, he doesn't let it stop him from doing what he loves, you know, all that. Um, newsflash, Nick Jonas is rich. Unfortunately, not all of us are rich yet. He can afford to pay for his insulin, he can afford to pay for a CGM, he can afford to pay for all this stuff, and the unfortunate stupid part of life is not everyone can do that not it it kills me heart and soul to think about the fact that there are so many people out there who die every single day because they don't get their insulin they don't they can't afford their insulin they have to ration their insulin whatever they don't have access to insulin and they die because of it because insulin is so stupidly expensive but that's a talk for another time you can't compare your life to someone else's. You can take inspiration from them. Draw inspiration from people. Yes, please do. Draw inspiration and hope and love for life, whatever. Um, take that from the people that you look up to. That's why we have people that we look up to in, um, in our lives and stuff because we can say, you know, like they got through this, they did this, I can do that too doesn't mean that I have to take the same exact path, doesn't mean I can take the same exact path as them, but it shows me that it can be done. Just because your life doesn't look like exactly like someone else's and your life isn't perfect does not mean you failed. It does not mean that your life is worthless or that it'll never get better. It just means that you need to find the path that works for you. And that's hopefully something that your endocrinologist is helping you with and your parents and your siblings or whoever. It almost gives them a false sense of security when you don't put a butt on there. When you say, I'm totally happy even with diabetes, like it doesn't control me, but it still sucks, it still hurts. You're allowed to say that you don't like it, that you feel frustrated, that you don't want diabetes. It's okay to not want your illness. Especially for me growing up, it was a whole lot of, you know, taking it back and, you know, saying like, I wouldn't change a thing or blah, 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 blah. You, you get the picture. And when I was younger, I would think, well, no, I don't want this. I don't want my kids to have this. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want my husband or whoever I marry to have to deal with this. It was really hard, especially growing up, because I was diagnosed when I was six. Um, I think I've told you guys, yeah, I've told you guys about this. Um, and so I grew up, I didn't know anything better than having, or having diabetes or being a diabetic. So when I looked around and I saw my friends living normal lives while I was at the endocrinologist, um, like pretty much all the time because I couldn't get my A1C down to a normal level because my blood sugars were so, so bad. 
I was, I, it was hard and I didn't want this. I wanted to be playing with them. I wanted to be going to the movies with them. I didn't want to be stuck in this doctor's office being yelled at by my endocrinologist because I wasn't getting perfect numbers. And you know, it's okay to kind of mourn what you never will have. Um, whether you were diagnosed later in life or earlier in life like I was, like it's okay to mourn that. It's okay to wish you didn't have diabetes or an illness or whatever. It's okay. But what's not okay is when you kind of give up, is when you kind of say, well, I don't want this, so I'm just going to pretend it's not there. That's when it becomes not okay. I did that for not a very long time, but enough that it kind of took a toll on me. I think I was like 13, 14, you know, those ages, <laughs> of course. And I just, I did not want diabetes. I didn't want to deal with my diabetes. I didn't want anyone to know I had diabetes. And so I just didn't take care of it. I didn't bolus. I didn't um, count my carbs. I just lived life as if I was normal. And of course that's going to affect like your entire life. It got to a point where I had to ask myself, like, do I want to live or do I want to give up? And I didn't want this. I didn't want this at all. But I had it. God gave it to me. It was a thing. It was done. There's nothing I could do about it. So what am I going to do to make this life with this illness the best that I can make it? And you kind of have to get to that point somehow or another. And you have to realize, like, it's okay. It's okay to say that it sucks. It's okay to not like it. It's okay to not want it. But what's not okay is when you just give up on it. When you just let yourself hate it. Does that make sense? What do you think? I wasn't listening. There are still days when I struggle. Like, this, uploading this video, especially lately, even now at 18, almost 19, which is crazy. Um, even now I go through stages and kind of patches of my life where I don't want to talk about my illnesses. I don't want to, I don't want anyone to know. I don't want, I don't want to reach out and help someone. And even though I've kind of started really, especially recently as I've grown older, started to embrace my diabetes and my illnesses and um, stuff like that, it still is really hard to deal with. And Sometimes you just don't want to talk about it. And if you are growing up with diabetes, if you have diabetes, whatever, um, you will go, you will go through stages like that. And that's okay too. It's completely normal. It does not mean you're giving up. It just means that you're struggling with that right now. And it won't always, you won't always struggle like that. You will struggle with it, but not always. Sometimes you will feel really great, and sometimes you will feel really bad. You will struggle. You will hurt. Thank you. You will feel alone. You will feel abandoned. You will feel like no one cares. Your friends will not understand. And that's okay. It's okay. Like, I, I see you. I understand you are not alone, even though you feel like it. I understand. I did not have friends who really understood my illnesses growing up. Like, I had one friend say to my face, I don't want to be your friend anymore because you're always sick and it annoys me. And I, at the time, I didn't, I didn't understand and I really struggled with resenting that person for almost until up until this year. I really struggled with resenting anyone who kind of shunned me for something I couldn't control. But you just have to realize, you have to come to a realization that they don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand what they're saying, they don't, they don't understand at all. And that's why they do the things that they do, that's why they say the things that they say. And you will find friends who empathize with you, who understand. Go to camps, go to events. Internet friends can be really great, especially when you don't really have a community in your city or your town or whatever, as long as you be really careful with that. Anyway, 
you will find people who love you despite your illness and who nurture you and take care of you. Friends who will say, I love you and I want to care and I care about you, so please teach me. Teach me how to take your blood sugar when you're low. Teach me how to inject a glucagon. Um, teach me these things because I love you and I care about you. You will find those friends, I promise you. But you have to put yourself in a place where you can find them. You can't shut yourself off. You can't let go of the hope and possibility that you will find people like that. It's really hard, I know, <laughs> but you will get there. I promise you are, you are so, I see you. Like I see you, I understand you, I get how it feels. But even in the hard times I've learned recently, there's still hope. There's still good things. And I didn't, I put this video off for so long because I was so scared that I wouldn't have a positive message to put at the end of that. And maybe I don't. Maybe this is all really sad and you're just sitting there like, oh my gosh, what is she talking about? But sometimes you don't have a positive message and that's fine. But I think this is a quote that my mom told me once. She said, no one knows how to sit with the sadness anymore. And it's kind of true because we don't, we don't want to feel sad. We don't want to feel any negative emotions. We only want to feel happy now. And we, we just want to take it and lock it up and put it away and never speak or think of it again. We only want positive, great emotions. Um, but sometimes you just gotta sit with the sadness. You just gotta say, look, it's hard and I don't like it, but I'm not gonna let it hurt me. I'm not gonna let it define me. I'm not going to let it, I'm going, I need to let it affect me because it is something that I cannot control, but I'm not going to lose hope because there's always hope. So if you're struggling, just know that this this channel is a safe place. If you need someone to talk to, I will put links in the description. If you want to come talk to me, please, please, please do. Um, you can find my Instagram at the bottom of the description. Um, I changed my username but I changed all the links in my video description, so if you go through any of those, it should lead to the same Instagram. But just in case, my Instagram is Bethany Kinsey Music. You can find me there, DM me. I promise I'll respond and we'll talk and I will do whatever I can to help and make you feel better. I would so rather you talk to someone than to just continue feeling hurt and alone because I understand that feeling and I wish I had someone to talk to. So if you need a big sister, I'm right here. And if you like this video and you want to subscribe, the subscribe button is down below. I hope you guys like this video. If you want to join me on another coffee date, please um, leave a comment, tell me what you liked about this video and I will do more in the future. Or also if you want to leave me some subjects that we can talk about in future coffee date episodes. I love you guys so much and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.